As the Biden administration begins its Help is Here tour to promote the Democrats' $1.9 trillion COVID relief package, a delegation of Republicans headed by House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy launched their own tour this week at the U.S. southern border, where as many as 4,000 migrant children who sought refuge in the United States are being held in crowded cells, many for longer than the three-day limit. On Monday, McCarthy said they toured an ICE detention center in El Paso and spoke to Fox News about visiting a border patrol station to speak with agents. When you go up to Monument 3 and you talk to those agents, it's not just people from Mexico or Honduras or El Salvador. They're now finding people from Yemen, Iran, Turkey, people on the, on the terrorist watch list they are catching. And they're rushing it all at once. On Saturday, the Department of Homeland Security ordered the FEMA, that's Federal Emergency Management Agency, to, quote, help receive shelter and transport the children over the next 90 days. This is a 17-year-old Honduran migrant speaking to Reuters. Thank God we are here at our destination, and there will be some opportunities here for us. We came here suffering. We have been on the road for a month suffering, hungry, no sleep. Thousands of the unaccompanied minors are being sent to cities across Texas, including the capital of the state, Austin, and to Dallas, where FEMA will hold as many as 3,000 unaccompanied teens, mainly boys. This comes as Democrats on Capitol Hill could vote this week on bills to protect undocumented immigrants brought to the U.S. as children and provide legal status to farm workers uh, and also a path to, um, uh, to citizenship to DACA recipients. For more, we go to El Paso, where we're joined by Fernando Garcia, founding director of the Border Network for Human Rights. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Fernando. Describe the scene and what you think needs to happen. Listen, uh, what we have seen, uh, what we are experiencing at the border, uh, yes, is, is indeed a surge of uh, families and children coming through the border. By, but by no means this is, this is a crisis or a new situation, as Republicans uh, had actually presented it, uh, historic in the last 10 years, we had seen uh, an influx of more families and more uh, uh, children coming through the border. Just to give you an, an example, in the year of uh, 2015, we had close, it, close to 40,000 unaccompanied minors. By 2019, we had, um, this is, this is uh, a couple of years ago during Trump administration, 70,000 unaccompanied minor, uh, minors. So what we are seeing at the border is not new. I mean, this is part of a larger problem. Uh, we had situations uh, in Central America and in Mexico that are expelling not only children, but families. And, um, and they continue to come. I mean, they, they never stop coming. What happened, for example, in uh, last year in 2020, uh, instead of ha uh, detaining these children and, and so how process them and releasing them in the United States, Trump administration deported uh, expelled uh, close to 10,000 children on a company minors. So uh, so it is not true. I mean, we don't have uh, the so-called crisis at the border. If anything, we have a humanitarian crisis, but, but more than anything, we have a crisis of how the government is responding right now. I think Biden administration is not ready, was not ready to deal with a situation like this. And specifically after Trump destroyed the systems, destroyed the infrastructure, in the refugee and asylum systems in the last four years. Well, Fernando, could you talk a little bit in terms of the uh, in the particular surge, this most recent surge? Of, uh, are you finding that the, the role of these criminal gangs and uh, the coyotes who are actually are stirring up migration because there's money for them? I, I'm here now. It's eight, nine, ten thousand dollars for to pay coyotes to help people get to the border. <clears throat> I mean, that has been true for many, many years here at the border. I mean, but that, that is not uh, uh, specific for this year. I mean, how has the border has been militarized uh, since uh, 1994? Uh, in the last 20 years, what we have seen is a surge in the business of coyotes and, uh, and the smugglers. I mean, to cross from El Paso to Juarez, uh, for, sorry, from Juarez to El Paso, uh, coyotes are charging thousands of dollars because they are—they have the ones that actually have the, the ways and means to bring people across. Obviously, many of them are connected to criminal organizations on the Mexican side. But this is the result. I mean, we need to be very clear about this. 
This is the result of the militarization of the border. The harder that is that that, that becomes to come across, this is this is uh, more business for some of these uh, smugglers uh, in some of these criminal organizations. And again, uh, immigration is a historic phenomenon. People continue to come for multiple reasons: crises in Central America, not only in terms of violence but also economic crises. But then uh, when they get to the border, they see that, that there is the construction of uh, border walls, uh, that there is more border patrol. The, the populated areas are sealed uh, so that people cannot cross between Juarez and El Paso. So they had to hire some of these coyotes to actually take them farther away into the deserts, into the mountains, where these immigrants are more exposed. So th this is not new. I mean, this is this calm, uh uh, comes as as because the border has been uh, militarized in the last twenty years. And in terms of the potential, now that uh, there is a the Democrats are in control or tenuous control of both the House and the Senate as well as the White House for any kind of uh, legal uh, reform th that would bring some uh, order and and humanity to the. To immigration policy in the United States, what do the prospects look like right now, from what you can tell? Yeah, again, listen. Uh, I do believe that this administration has uh, they had very good intentions. Biden won this election by 70 percent of the Hispanics uh, voting in this country, and in, in the top of the agenda of the Hispanic and Latino community. It is immigration reform. I mean, people is demanding legalization of the 11 million people uh, already in the United States, and also to establish some kind of uh, processes where we can actually bring workers and families legally, so we don't have to continue uh, experiencing these searches, you know, uh, of people coming through the border. So again, uh, we're expecting that to happen. But you know, I think I'm very concerned about how this administration. It is, uh, uh, is is not prepared, uh, or was not prepared to deal with the situation at the border. I mean, for four years, uh, Trump destroyed uh, everything at the border. I mean, they dedicated so much money to the border wall that there's that, that there's no asylum officers or even asylum uh, judges that actually can expedite the process of the ch of these children and those families. So, if this administration if they don't put enough resources in very quickly on the ground, here, I mean, we need like the creation of, of, of welcoming centers, for example, where we can surround these families with services, access to health care, access to legal support. If we don't do that uh, quickly, this can become a problem, a political problem. Probably it is already a problem for this administration that whenever they got, they're going to get to Congress to discuss immigration reform, these Republicans will continue to actually use uh, this situation to derail any any robust and systemic immigration reform. We I mean, just have again, 30 seconds, but Fernando, can you talk about where exactly this money should go? I mean, the idea of uh, diverting it away from these detention centers and building up that uh, detention infrastructure versus to nonprofits that are used to dealing humanely with migrants. No, this, this is not going to resolve. It will be resolved by nonprofits and community efforts like us. I mean, we're doing a lot. What we need is a robust investment by this government on the creation of what I mentioned, this detention, this, this uh, welcoming centers. This is not, these are not detention centers run by ICE or Border Patrol or any private entity. We want institutions at the government to create welcoming centers where actually they can provide enough resources for uh, these families and for these children, and also expand the, 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 the sponsorship program, specifically having families to sponsor these children that are coming by themselves. And finally, I think uh, we already said it. I mean, we need more resources at the ports of entry. We're not, we're not, we need more asylum officers uh, and uh, asylum judges. We don't have that at the border. That's why we're experiencing this backlog and these uh, the detention centers housing children and, and families.